In this module, we will be looking at solution of Helmholtz equation. Okay. We have defined what is Helmholtz equation. It is actually the one that does not contain explicit time dependence. Okay. So, we want to find out how to solve this Helmholtz equation. It generally turns out that it is actually very difficult to solve this Helmholtz equation, but it is possible to pick certain based on some intuition it is possible to pick certain directions for the electric field okay, and then see if our picked solutions or our guessed solutions are actually consistent or not. Okay. Let us imagine that these waves electromagnetic waves are being generated by some action at sun okay, which we can assume to be very very far away from us right. and let us also assume that uh, these waves uh, are uh, of a particular frequency only although this may not be true and it is not true in fact in general, but let us assume for simplicity that these waves which are generated on sun are of a particular frequency. So, these waves are coming to us okay. the waves are actually spherical okay. this is we are not going to prove that one here we can prove that one later, but the waves which are generated are all spherical and then they would start expanding like this. You must have seen many movies or you know you must have seen it if when you drop a pebble in the pond that there would be this expansion of spherical surfaces. So, these surfaces expand like this, but by the time they reach earth the expansion would be so large that over the entire earth or at least over the uh, region that I am considering let us say I put up my receiving antenna over here to intercept the sun's rays then over this antenna which could be say 1 meter by 1 meter for example, that wave which are which is coming although is spherical becomes locally like a plane wave right. See it is like imagine a ball. Okay. So, you imagine a ball and then imagine the radius of the ball being increasing, increasing, increasing and then you start to pick of a very small region of the ball okay. and if you see that region that looks almost like a plane of paper rather than a curved surface it looks almost like a piece of plain paper right so this is the sphere that i have okay and then if i now pick up a very small region which is what would happen right see this is the small region why because this spherical surface which represents the wave generated from sun is actually quite large right so, and the on that I am putting my small receiving antenna and saying what is the variation of electromagnetic field over here on this antenna. So, this is a small region which I am seeing. So, although I would be looking at a curved surface like this right. So, this is the curved surface that I am looking at, but for all practical purposes right this can actually be replaced by a plane. graph. Okay. So, these kind of waves are called as plane waves okay. and we will be looking at plane waves okay. and mathematically plane waves are quite easy to sim easy to specify because they can be specified easily I will tell you in a minute now, but physically plane waves cannot really exist okay. because mathematical plane waves cannot exist simply because you will see why they cannot exist. But the idea is that if a wave source is sufficiently sufficiently far away from the place where you are looking for the waves, then you can actually model that wave as a plane wave. Okay. So, that is the whole idea of using plane waves. This is why sometimes this is called as plane wave approximation and that is very widely used in electromagnetic studies and optical studies. Okay. So, how do we define mathematical plane waves? Mathematical plane waves can be defined by writing. So, mathematically plane waves can be defined by associating E and h fields to be of this form, which form I will just in a minute I will draw that. The form is this, these are the electric field lines. Okay. 
these are the electric field lines of the plane wave okay and these are the magnetic field lines you can see that these electric and magnetic field lines are all crossing at right angles so you can see that these are all crossing at right angles okay okay so this is like taking up wired mesh and then putting it up in front of you with one axis pointing to the electric fields this is the electric field and this is the magnetic field e and h fields okay so these are called the plane waves and these plane waves have to be advancing they have to be propagating somewhere right so if you go back to this spherical wave you know which is expanding like this spherical wave expanding like this right it actually means that i have these plane waves right which are expanding all the way right so these plane waves are all expanding all the way over here right so, and then this is how the plane waves are expanding so if i consider the direction in which these plane waves are expanding as z axis right okay let me consider the direction of expansion of the surface of wave surface as z axis then it is immediately clear that electric field and magnetic field both have to be in plane that is perpendicular to z axis correct they have to be plane that is perpendicular to z axis so for example if this is my axis of propagation the wave is propagating like this and this is my magnetic fields okay or you can think of this board that is there at the at the back here okay as consisting of lines which are electric and magnetic field lines okay and then the board is advancing towards you the board is coming towards you in the z direction so this is the direction of wave propagation and these are the electric and magnetic fields okay so we are free to choose electric and magnetic fields to be lying along x or y direction but they have to lie only in x and y direction and they have to be perpendicular to each other and they have to be perpendicular to the plane that contains both right so e is perpendicular to h which is perpendicular to z axis which is the direction of propagation this is the first rule for a plane wave which is propagating along z direction if the plane wave direction is considered to be x axis then e and h must be perpendicular to each other and they have to be perpendicular to x axis in that case electric and magnetic fields will lie in y z plane okay so that's as simple as that so you have electric fields and magnetic fields now in x y plane and perpendicular to z axis now within this x y plane can the strength of electric field vary we can rigorously show that the strength of electric field and magnetic field cannot vary they have to remain constant this is a plane wave the strength of electric field and magnetic field remains constant in xy plane or completely independent of xy coordinates you can kind of intuitively think about why this is so if they were to actually depend on x and y then there would be some curl right and there would be some divergence but if there is divergence then del dot e will not be equal to 0 right and del dot b is not equal to 0 therefore you cannot have variations okay we will not prove them rigorously it's not important but take this point that electric and magnetic fields must be independent of x and y coordinates these conditions are sufficient for us to consider electric field magnetic field and z axis as a system of three mutually perpendicular uh, uh, axis right so one electric field magnetic field and when you turn electric field magnetic field it would propagate in the direction of 
z axis. Now, you might rightfully ask who stopped you from considering propagation along minus z direction, answer is no one actually there could be exactly a way which is going along minus z direction also, because the equations actually do not tell you that you have to consider only forward propagating equations. They also tell you that you can consider in fact, mathematically the solution would be backward propagating or neg negative z propagating solutions as well. Okay. And if you go to that electric field and magnetic field should be in, in such a way that electric field to magnetic field will point in the direction of z, then you have to appropriately change the electric field and magnetic field orientations. Okay. Other than that, there is no problem if you consider negatively propagating wave equation, I mean wave solutions or waves. But of course, physically you might not have a source, right. See, if only there is a source on to the right side, there would be some waves which are going in backward direction. If the source are on the left side and you consider this as the right side or the z positive z axis, the prop waves would only propagate to the forward axis, I mean to the forward z region. Okay. If there are some reflectors or scatterers in between, then it is possible that at any given region of space, there could be propagation of both plus z and minus z waves and those are some examples that we will see later. Okay. So, to recapitulate the solution for Helmholtz equation is in general complicated. To simplify this complication, we will assume a plane wave approximation plane wave approximation is very nice, very valid approximation when the source of waves are quite far away from the region where you are talking about this. Mathematically plane waves can be defined by associating electric and magnetic fields such that they are both perpendicular to the direction of propagation say z axis okay, and they remain constant in the x y plane or they remain independent of x y coordinates. So, effectively what I have now is electric field being consisting only of say x component which is x hat e x right and it should be independent of x and y. So, what can it be dependent on only z yes only when you keep moving far away from the plane wave then its amplitude might change amplitude would decrease right otherwise the amplitude is independent as long as you are at a constant z plane. Okay. So, this is the expression for electric field now. Similarly, magnetic field has to be along y h y of z. Now, let us see whether whatever we have used some physical justification and intuition actually is also mathematically valid. Can we show that these assumed solutions are actually solutions? If they are, what is the nature of this E x of z and h y of z? Okay. So, to do that, let us recall. Helmholtz equation that is del square plus omega square by v square into E is equal to 0 and instead of writing omega square by v square every time, let me introduce an expression okay, which is a constant k which is equal to k which in which such that k square is equal to omega square by v square. Okay. So, let me introduce that so that this equation becomes del square plus k square. Okay into E is equal to 0. Now, expand this equation. What is del square? Del square is del square by del x square, del square by del y square plus del square by del z square. Electric field E, electric field E is nothing but x hat E x of z right plus k square there is x hat e x of z is equal to 0 correct. Now, e x is only function of z it is not a function of x or y. So, there is no point retaining this del square by del x square and del square by del y square terms they all cancel each other and then there is x hat x hat everywhere. So, which simply means that I can drop the vector also from this uh, condition and then just replace this with a scalar equation and I get del square e x by del z square plus k square e x is equal to 0. right? And since e x is only function of z, there is no need for me to write down this as del square by 
del z square, I can simply write this as d square e x by d z square. Okay. This is the equation that is highly simplified from Helmholtz equation okay, based on our ideas that we have discussed previously and we want to see what is the solution for electric field E x. How do we solve this equation? Well, I do hope that you remember your solutions for uh, differential equations. So, the solution that we were looking for was for this equation d square E x by d z square plus k square E x equal to 0. The solution of that equation is have d square E x by d z square is equal to minus k square E x correct. The solution for this would be E x of z is equal to some constant a e to the power j k z plus some constant b e to the power minus j k z. Does it actually get satisfy this equation? Can you just verify that this is actually the equation, I leave this as an exercise to you. Okay. This is a small exercise to you to show that this assumed solution or this guessed solution indeed satisfies original equation. Okay which is this one, we will call this as some equation 1, okay. equation 1. You should verify that. For example, you turn off b, okay. then what would happen? You have a e power j k z. So, differentiating once with respect to z, you will get j k, twice you will get j k square, j k square is minus k square. So, minus k square into e x is equal to minus k square into e x. Therefore, this is a solution. Similarly, minus j k would also be the solution. So, it is up to you now to whether retain a plus k z solution or a minus k z solution. Mathematically both exist, but if you now say that well you know I do not have any wave, any physical source which would actually push the waves along minus z direction, then I can make this equal to 0. Okay. If not then I do not have to make it equal to 0. So, this is called as the forward wave and this is called as the backward wave. I am using forward and backward in an analogy with transmission line which we are going to study after the wave modules. Okay. Based on that any wave which is going along positive z direction is forward wave for me, any wave which is going along minus z direction is called backward wave for me. Okay. So, that is just my simple short notation that I am going to use. Okay. I have E x of z is equal to considering only the forward wave solution, I have E x of z is equal to A which is some constant and instead of talking about A which conveys no intuition, let us call this as E 0. Okay. E 0 stands for some amplitude of the electric field. So, you have E 0 e power j k z as the solution. Do you recognize what has actually happened over here? The expression for electric field is depending on z correct, but it is actually a complex number. right? If you try to sketch this one, you will not be able to sketch this, it would actually be a complex number, you will have to sketch the real part first, sketch the imaginary part first right? or you can interpret this as a phasor. Right? So, if you actually think of this in terms of the phasor with real and imaginary axis, then this corresponds to a phasor which is rotating right? with an angular velocity of k z. So, you fix z and fix k, then it would point to a particular direction. But if you keep moving along z, then this would actually be a phasor which is rotating. Okay. Or we also satisfy that its amplitude is changing only with z, yes, because there is no change in x and y directions. Right. So, this is just a wave which is propagating along z direction. Right. The second thing that you have to notice is that this is a phasor one, therefore, then it is not the complete time dependent form. Right. So, if you want to find the time dependent form you have to multiply this E x of z by E power j omega t, then take the real part of it. Right? So, to obtain the time dependent form which is E x of z t and what do you get if you want, if you do this operation multiply by E power j omega t, you will get E power j omega t into E power j omega t plus k z. 
okay. And with that if you go back here you have electric field here as real part of E x of z and substitute for E x of z here I get E 0 E power j omega t minus k z and real part of this is nothing but E 0 is real therefore, E 0 comes out of the real operation you have E 0 cos of omega t minus k z this is the expression for electric field ok. This is in the scalar form if you want to write down the expression of the electric field in the vector form you can attach the appropriate vector direction right. So, this electric field would always be directed along the x axis and if you were to fix z and t and everything this cos term is fixed then it would point with an amplitude of E 0 times something whatever the cos value is something and it would always point along x ok. There are two things we can do now fix t and see what happens with respect to z and fix z and see what happens with respect to time. This is like I take an oscilloscope I hook it up into air ok and this oscilloscope display should tell you the electric field ok that of the form cos omega t minus k z and I do not I am not satisfied with only one oscilloscope at this particular point in z I have two three different oscilloscopes ok kept at two different or three different points along z direction ok. Now, if I were to say this is z equal to 0 ok and this is z equal to something this is z equal to something uh, rather than talking about z it is easier for me to talk in terms of k z ok. So, k z equal to 0 k z equals pi by 2 k z equals pi I have got three different oscilloscopes at values of k z equals 0, k z equals pi by 2 and k z equals pi. This k z equal to 0 is my reference ok. Now, with that if I were to see what is the display on the oscilloscope right, what would be the display that I would see? Go back to the expression take k z is equal to 0 with k z equal to 0 the expression for electric field will be x hat E 0 cos of omega t. So, if you were to look at the oscilloscope display you would actually see a display that would look like this correct. This is the cosine waveform this is a time. So, this is the axis with respect to time. So, this is a time t equal to 0 with an amplitude of E 0 right this will have an amplitude of E 0 and it would go as in this particular fashion ok. Now, if you try what happens at k z is equal to pi by 2 you get x hat E 0 cos of omega t minus pi by 2. Now, cos of omega t minus pi by 2 is sin omega t right. So, this would be cos omega t minus so it would be cos omega t cos pi by 2 which is 0 minus sorry plus sin omega t sin pi by 2. So, this would actually be equal to x hat E 0 sin omega t right. So, you look at your oscilloscope display the oscilloscope display would now show here right a sine wave at time t equal to 0 with the maximum amplitude of E 0 again. But if you notice at k z equal to 0 and k z equal to pi by 2 you will actually see a pi by 2 phase difference right. This wave at k z equal to pi by 2 is actually lagging the first wave by a value of pi by 2 right. Similarly, now when you try k z is equal to pi what you get is x hat E 0 cos of omega t minus pi right and this is cos omega t cos pi sin will be anyway be 0. So, this would be minus x hat E 0 cos omega t. So, if you look at the oscilloscope display the oscilloscope display will show you a wave that would look like this correct with an amplitude initially at t equal to 0 as minus E 0 right. So, you can actually see that if you were to put a point of reference you know some small object over here right this small object as you see is at different times appearing at different 
times right you do not have to do this one with respect to time you could actually fix time okay. 